Hi, we're back. I'm Fitz. And I'm Ben. And hey. we're here to talk with some women about women in technology and entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship. And here on my left, what's your name? Hi, I'm Mary Himmenfull. Mary, and you work at Google. Tell me a little bit about what you do at Google. Sure, thanks. So I'm head of global entrepreneurship at Google. Our team looks after all of Google's programs and partnerships to support startups and entrepreneurs around the world. So that sounds like you do a lot of travel. I do, I do. I love the airplane. <laughs> so, so what are some of the biggest challenges that you see as part of that job? There are a lot of opportunities. You know, our mission is to impact startups um, across the world. We have projects live in 25 countries. We work both with global partners like Startup Weekend and local partners in different cities to try to help further the ecosystem. And, and so you work in a lot of different areas. Can I'd like to ask you to start out by telling me, what are some of the things you do with women in technology inside of Google? Sure, absolutely. So within Google, we really believe in fostering a culture of diversity and inclusion, where we welcome different perspectives. We try to operate as a global company, but really focus on um, cultivating local culture within the company. And so we have actually an employee resource group, Women at Google, and there are 4,000 women across Google globally, 30 different chapters, and we focus on um, fostering innovation within Google and then externally outreaching to the community as well. So it's building building these communities of women at Google to, to help each other out and to support each other? To support one another and then to also promote diversity among our user base and to interact with the community as well. So for example, we're working right now with Women 2.0, who Sefi is here with us today, and they're a great uh, partner of ours. Well, let's let's introduce uh, Sefi. I'm sorry, you're, you said your name is Sefi? Sefi Nasiri, yes. Great, and, and what, what do you do? I had the global partnerships, sponsorships, and events at Women 2.0, so I do everything offline. Great. Can you tell us a little bit more about Women 2.0? Sure. Our mission is to help increase the number of female founders in technology startups, and we do that online by telling their stories and offline by uh, creating networking events and conferences where they can get together and talk about um, entrepreneurship. Great. So then, the, t the two of you have worked together in the past. Then I assume some we of have these? been working together today as well. Wonderful. Um, so I'm curious about your experience as as an entrepreneur, uh, female entrepreneur. Um, how did you How did you get into this in the first place? What What's this What's the background story here? The ingredients is you have amazing parents who are entrepreneurs as well. So when I grew up, I uh, was able to experience what it looks like to be an entrepreneur, uh, particularly my dad. And now everyone in the family is entrepreneurs as well, my brothers. Um, and today, when you look at it, um, you're able to study entrepreneurship. So things have changed quite a bit. Um, I started in the publishing and then came to Silicon Valley, uh, fell in love with technology, and here I am today. Mary, Mary how, how did you get to where you are? I mean, is there a class for studying to become head of global entrepreneurship at Google? <laughs> Definitely a lesson on the job, but I, I studied at Stanford here in Silicon Valley. I actually studied sociology and international policy, and I was very fascinated by opportunities, particularly in emerging markets. I um, spent some time in Bangkok there interning at the United Nations, and never thought I would actually uh, work in technology, but then became fascinated as, with technology as that platform for actually furthering development and growing the internet economies as a way towards you know, development. And so now it's a privilege and a pleasure to work with um, entrepreneurs, developers, students globally and try to help further and empower the next generation to be successful. Well, so that's a, that's a good segue to the next thing I want to talk to you about is, so you're working with, with these entrepreneurs globally and everything. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you how Google is working with these external entrepreneurs, including uh, SAPI and Women 2.0. Women sure, so track one for us is really focused on partnerships. So how do we work with like-minded organizations to help further their footprint and help them scale? So Women 2.0, for example, has a fantastic series of programs. We like to figure out how to incorporate um, Google tools and technologies where they can be helpful. The second bucket is really focused around Google programs where we can impact the community directly. So we have a pilot we're running right now in India and in Singapore um, and in Russia called Women Entrepreneurs on the Web. And it's basically a program to get thousands of women on, web, on the web um, using 10 Google products to help build and scale and market their businesses. We've been really fascinated by this. It's, it's basically those products, but then women come together at Google offices to receive hands-on training. And what we found is that you know, connecting people online is, is certainly very important but connecting them offline and building that community is equally as important. Getting that high bandwidth face-to-face -face conversation. Absolutely, and, and having access to that infrastructure of mentors who have failed and succeeded and can help you uh, is really critical. Uh, maybe you guys want to talk a little bit about mentors, actually. I was going to say, yeah, so um, what, what sort of challenges have you encountered as an entrepreneur and have you had mentors to work with? Um, 
as a entrepreneur, as a female entrepreneur, I think um, is quite hard to find mentors. Um, not just because there aren't enough female entrepreneurs who could be mentors, but sometimes they don't feel that they have enough time or they have the skill set. Um, and so I think one way Google is helping out with that is um, recognizing who in their own community or within Google is um, able to give those mentorships to the outside as well. And, and so does, does Women 2.0, does that actually help create mentorships? Have you, have you experienced that or seen that happen within the group? Sure. One way uh, we initiate that is with our networking event, our Founder Fridays, where we put some spotlight on female entrepreneurs who are successful. And with uh, expressing how they have become successful today, they're actually mentoring the next generation of entrepreneurs. That's great. Go ahead. So I, I want to come back to one thing you said. You were talking about bringing, bringing women uh, entrepreneurs into Google offices and helping them use Google app, apps and that sort of thing to make this happen. Can you give me an example? What's something that's really helpful uh, that we're teaching folks uh, and entrepreneurs out there? Sure, so we have a lot of, we have a program called Get Your Business Online. So in India, for example, that would be Get India Business Online. So this is for uh, folks in small businesses who do not yet have a web presence, which is a huge challenge for a lot of small businesses. So getting them set up with a free website, free domain hosting for a year, and then plugging into other Google tools, Google Plus, for example, um, leveraging the maps and geo tools and, and making sure they're able to get up and running and as quickly as possible. Okay, so, and if they want to use other tools like that aren't Google, it's still okay, but we're helping them use the Google tools, right? Absolutely, I mean, we, we want to promote businesses getting online, leveraging the best tools on the internet. We obviously have more expertise in our own platforms, but um, one amazing tool has been Google Plus Hangouts, actually, and the ability to connect and do remote mentorship, for example, over Google Plus Hangouts with entrepreneurs from around the world. It's been really exciting to watch. As you, you said, you, you there wasn't a class for how to be what, do what you do. It's a lot of on-the-job training. Did you have mentors that were helpful to you? Most definitely, a lifelong mentors throughout. Um, starting with certainly my parents, a lot of amazing entrepreneurs and, and uh, colleagues along the way. Everybody has been super helpful. So I think that's the one one critical thing is just don't be afraid to ask questions, ask for help, ask for advice. All inputs are welcome, and then you kind of you know pick and glean your lessons. I mean, I think Ben and I both have had some very Absolutely. influential mentors think, in our time. I think it's interesting that both of you have had parents as mentors to sort of get into this area. Um, one of the things I was talking about earlier with you was, was just the, the issue of, of being a woman in this space. And what, if there are challenges specific to that, to walk up to somebody and say, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, I start companies, and do you get strange reactions because you're, you're a woman in this space? Has that happened? Not really, because I never look at myself as a woman. I'm looking at myself as um, an entrepreneur or a founder or a technologist, wherever I am. And so going into a room, I'm not looking at victimizing myself. I'm looking at empowering myself. So empowering yourself is looking at my resources, looking at my network, and who can help me succeed instead of um, looking at my shortcomings. And have you seen that to be a problem with other people you've worked with, where they, they see themselves as a victim? Um, I don't want to say victim, but um, they look at the shortcomings and the negative instead of the positive. There's always um, ways to improve yourself by looking at where are your resources, what is available to you today, and educating yourself before you step forward and do the next step, whether it's in um, building a product or a service or uh, going to an interview or pitching your company for funding. So it really is about attitude is what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, it sounds a lot like you're saying. It, it's attitude. It's, it's giving yourself permission to be awesome. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So I, I'm curious about what's going on at Google I.O. related to women in technology. Can you, you want to talk about that, Mary? Sure. So a couple of exciting things. Last night we kicked off with a pre-I.O. event called Women Tech Makers at I.O. We had a couple hundred women at the Google San Francisco office, and we had a panel of Google female executives actually sharing some of their experiences in leadership, product innovation, how to foster a culture of empowerment within a company. So that was fantastic. And on Friday morning, day three at 9 a.m., Seppi and I will actually both be on a panel, which is uh, called Designing for the Other Half, Sexy Isn't Always Pink. And that'll be more of an exploration of the product business landscape and how to design and market uh, products for everyone thinking about inclusion. So 9 a.m. on Friday. 9 a.m. on Friday, okay. And that'll wind up on YouTube after I.O. as well, right? Absolutely, it will. So, so let's talk about pink for a second. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the typical thing. We're gonna design, we're gonna take a product that's for the general public and make it pink and then it's called the product for women. What, what do you guys feel about that? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think colors are important. I mean, even if you look at Google's colors, there are lots of different shades. Uh, Women 2.0 is this hot pink, actually. Um, I think it's catchy, but would I wear it every day? Probably not. <laughs> But I, I think it's an amazing color. It's just an attitude as well with that. So not every product has to be pink to be sexy or appealing to women. Well, what, what have you learned about designing for products for women? What are, what are the, some of the wisdom you've picked up? Well, I think women design products that are a solution to a problem. So it could be any color, actually. Um, uh, most likely the solution they haven't found when they go out and, and look for it. So what they did is say, okay, I can be the person designing it and it, it works, it sells. You, you told me an amazing statistic before and this, this is something good for everybody watching this to listen that, that people who are early adopters of, of a lot of the new technology there are women. And, and so, can you talk about that please? Well, I think it's 80% of consumers today have, uh, um, and they're women, who have purchasing powers. Um, whether you are an office manager or HR or you are the entrepreneur, um, we are controlling the money, so we are going to also make the decision. It's great to have women who are designing for women and the general public when they have that idea of what is the next best thing. I guess I, if I were designing a game or an Android app or something, is, is there a mistake I might make that that is a common mistake that might make make it difficult for women to, to want to purchase that kind of thing? If it's not user friendly for the women, obviously, um, we have different responsibilities. For example, we have kids, so if, if it's a gadget that is not working for me to have a small purse or a big purse or it doesn't fit in certain ways, um, then yes, then you're missing out on that particular um, demographic or market. Interesting. So, Mary, do you want to talk, maybe talk a little bit about that, about designing products uh, more for women or for the Sure. more accessible? Sure, I think it's about designing for inclusion really and just understanding and listening to feedback from your user base, right? Regardless of gender or, or demographic or where they are coming from globally, it's really about um, how do you solicit that user feedback and how do you incorporate it and continue to test. So I think of it more from an inclusive perspective than targeting any one specific gender. I, to, to come back to, to what you talked about earlier about uh, working internally at Google uh, to be more inclusive for women, uh, what is something that entrepreneurs or people keep starting small companies could do to, to, to do that? Absolutely. So I think it's about building the culture you know, from, from the bottom up, from the top down, every direction, really promoting um, flexibility within the workplace and you know, leading by example. So really um, facilitating leadership training among women within the company and bringing them together as a community to help support one another too. Okay. Wonderful. I think we got to wrap it up here, guys. So thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, did you guys have any sort of parting things you want to Parting, to parting say? comments? Parting <laughs> re recommendations or comments? Yeah, just that we're really excited to be here. We're excited about the opportunities and technology for both men and women, and we hope you tune in to the panel on Friday. Friday at 9 o'clock. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bye.